Alright, so this one's a little bit different, right? Uh, I decided I was going to see what ChatGPT... Oh, God damn, I can't even talk. ChatGPT thought of my code for uh, the Weapon Roulette game that I added to World at War for Zombies Mode. And uh, so we're going to go ahead through and I uh, passed it my code. And we're going to see what its thoughts are on it. And uh, I told it to rate my code and, and see what it thought of it. And so here we go. Here's a detailed review and rating of your script, focusing on its functionality, efficiency, readability, error handling, and modularity. Okay? So, uh, functionality. The script defines a weapon roulette system that randomly assigns weapons from a predefined list of, to the player when activated. The functionality looks solid in terms of random weapon selection, switching between active and inactive states, and HUD feedback. It effectively handles the core mechanic of the weapon roulette system and seems to perform the desired behavior. Okay, and uh, score. So it gives me an 8 out of 10. Reason, the implement it. Uh, sorry, I can't talk today. It implements the intended functionality well, but could benefit from more control over reward selection or preventing specific edge cases, such as, like it says here, such as uh, grenade only reward, which won't happen because of the way I scripted it. Uh, I'll explain that here in a second. Um, so that edge case is just never going to happen. And I did thoroughly test this. It, it never just gives you a grenade only. Uh, but you'll, if we go back up here to the code, um, whenever it assigns you a reward, as you see here, we're going to give you a weapon, which is out of a pool of only guns. And all of these guns are working guns that are in zombies mode. And uh, again, we're going to give you a grenade. So one of the three different grenade types, stolen grad, frag grenade, or symbol monkeys. Uh, the Molotovs do not work in, um, it, it, as you can see, I commented that up here, uh, out, because I did try it. It shows an icon, but cannot throw, right? Because I did test that. It doesn't work. So, uh, yeah. Uh, basically, it says out of functionality, yes, uh, 8 out of 10, which I think is pretty good. Uh, um. Now, I'm not sure how good or effective this is at actually reviewing code, but it seems to be pretty good at it, actually. Uh, now, this isn't condoning using this to write code. Uh, I have asked it some coding questions, as you could probably see over here. Mostly stuff I already knew, uh, but, like, I did ask it some questions to see, like, what kind of answers it would give me. And, I mean, unless you're, like, if you're a beginner, you're not going to, be able to use the code effectively even if it is good code or well you know written out uh, because you need to know how it functions and be able to uh, make use of it properly so I don't recommend using this to write code for you but I just wanted to see what it's uh, like overall score is going to be for my code so, uh, efficiency weapons list you have a well organized list of weapons and it is it is stored in an array, which is a good choice for handling this data efficiently. Weapon assignment loop. The roulette system does a weight between random weapon assignments, which is fine. However, the intervals for switching weapons seems potentially too long. Random int range, 10 to 30, so that's 10 seconds to 30 seconds, which I think is fine. I mean, it's weapon, weapons roulette. It's supposed to be like you know I don't want you to have it for like two seconds and then get a new one because that gets really annoying and then you don't even really get a chance to fire it before you get a new one so that's kind of why I did it that way uh, but you know to anybody who takes my code and uses it you could tweak those numbers however you want uh, meaning the player might feel stuck with a weapon for too long uh, I don't know that's up for debate why don't you guys tell me what you think uh, Re-adding old weapons. At the end of the weapon roulette think function, 
The script restores the player's original weapons, which is nice. However, if the original weapon set was too was large, repeatedly removing and re-adding them could cause unnecessary overhead. Well, uh, when we go back and review the code again that I fed it, we'll, we'll go ahead and take a look at that, and I'll tell you why that shouldn't be an issue. Um, but it gives me a 7 out of 10, so, I mean, it looks like I'm a pretty efficient coder for this, um, in terms of what ChatGPT thinks, at least. Uh, reason the script performs efficiently, but could improve from weapon rotation frequency or optimization on how weapons are taken and returned. I'm not going to argue, maybe I could do a better job with that, but it works pretty well, and I'm happy with it, and I'm sure that anybody who uses my, uh, code would probably be happy with it too so um, yeah, that's really beauties in the eye of the beholder right so uh, variable naming the variable names like rewards roulette thank roulette hide are self-explanatory and make the script easy to follow well that's the intention right you don't want to name stuff like you know dick well, what the fuck is dick you know that has nothing to do with fucking you know weapon roulette or like you know I don't know fucking bumble cloth or something like you, you know what's that got to do with anything right you know you don't name it stuff that doesn't make sense especially if you got to go back and read it in a couple of months and you forget what you did you know that's not very you know a good thing to do it's not good practice really comments there are some comments at the top explaining the weapon categorization crappy weapons to troll brutal which something we'll get into and classics which help organize the script indentation the code is well indented and easy to read this makes it this makes understanding the flow of the script easier which is exactly what i wanted um, I'm trying to teach people who are beginners to learn how to script, so uh, indentation kind of is a very helpful thing, and I've been practicing that more because I kind of was lazy about it before. Uh, okay, so 8 out of 10. Uh, it's looking like I'm doing pretty good. The reason, reason, the script is mostly clean and readable, though ad additional commenting could help in maintaining and understanding the logic in more complex parts. All right. So error handling, weapon weapon validation. The script does not seem to handle potential edge cases like a weapon could potentially be undefined or invalid in rare cases, which I've tested this pretty thoroughly and I've never had it not give me anything. So, um, yeah, that's that's sort of an incorrect statement, but you know. It's not wrong. It could use some validation code just to make sure that it gives you something. Or maybe even uh, some code that makes sure you don't get the same weapon twice in a row. But outside of that, it's weapon roulette. I don't want it to you know, remove weapons from a list until you've gone through them all and then cycle through them again. That would defeat the purpose. So, uh, yeah. A player could receive a weapon that doesn't work. That's not possible because I only put the weapons in that do work in zombies mode. So that's not like a very accurate um, analysis. Like the grenade only scenario. And again, that's not going to happen because of the way I coded it. Um, so I think it kind of maybe misread some of my script or something like that. Uh, safety checks. Considering adding safety checks for scenarios where the player might not have weapons in their inventory, uh, that's, a, that's a possibly a good fix that, you know, maybe could be implemented, but uh, it's not likely because you always start out with the cult at least, so you're always at least going to have something, right? Six out of ten. Okay, so let's see. The reason. Basic error handling could be improved, especially ensuring valid weapons are assigned and edge cases related to player input or invalid rewards are handled. Modularity. Uh, oh yeah, the edge case it was talking about was like maybe if a player rapidly hits the trigger really quick, which it should handle that just fine. I, I mean, I haven't put too much testing into that, but it should handle that fine. Um, function uh, function organization the script is well separated function 
uh, roulette in it, roulette think, roulette HUD, which improves maintainability and makes it easy to extend or modify in the future. That's exactly what I wanted. I wanted to be able to maybe do more with it later if I wanted. Uh, reusability, the functions themselves are modular and reusable, though they are tightly coupled to the specific roulette mechanic. Well, that's kind of the way I intended this to be programmed. So, I mean, you know, you're not wrong, but, uh, you know, future reusability for other aspects of the game wasn't really part of the plan anyway. If you wanted to reuse certain logic, weapon assignment for the purposes, for other purposes, it would require some adjustments. Yeah, it's not exactly wrong about that, but it depends on what it's talking about. Like, as for instance, the uh, weapons list itself, that could be reused with anything. I could just call that function on anything if I wanted to. And maybe I'll demonstrate that here in a second, uh, like something we could do with that. So, uh, HUD handling. The HUD update logic, roulette HUD, is modular and handles the display of roulette states cleanly. That's pretty good. So it gives me an 8 out of 10. Reason, the script is fairly modular, though some functions could be further decoupled for uh, reusability and other parts of the game, and perhaps the logic for weapon handling could be abstracted. Okay, so not too bad. So what does it say about my overall rating? 7.4 out of 10, so that's not too bad. Now let's see what his final thoughts are. Um, strengths. The script is clean, functional, and modular with a straightforward state machine controlling the ru weapon roulette. It covers the essentials of random weapon assignment system and is relatively efficient in its design. Areas of improvement. Error handling, especially validating weapon assignment and could be improved or could be improved. The weapon switching frequency might need adjusted for player experience. Additionally, making the code slightly more reusable across different game scenarios would increase its flexibility. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much all I had to say about that. So uh, we could go ahead and pull this up and you'll see that uh, for the weapons roulette, uh, you'll see why I don't think that any of those edge cases are going to be the case. Okay, so here's our state machine. Now here's where it actually handles it. The first thing it does is it assigns a reward that's within the range of the pool of weapons. As you can see, the end of the weapons list is 29. That's all it goes up to. So there's no way that it's, it, it never has given me uh, a null weapon or anything. So it's not like I have to worry about that. The same thing with the grenades. So I specifically assign you a weapon and specifically assign you a grenade. And then when you're done, I specifically remove all weapons so you don't get uh, a weapon roulette weapon still in your inventory afterwards. And then I return the weapons that you had before you activated it. And we'll see that in action in a minute. Now as for this, like I was saying, we could reuse this. Because like, for instance, let's take a look here. See, this returns the rewards. So, if I wanted to just hand myself all the weapons, I actually have a piece of code that I'm not really using for anything. I could just go through here, and I could just change this, and I could say equals wep under slash list, and then instead of it being the players, it's not actually going through players anymore. It's now going through the weapons, and so just pretend that that's weapons because I'm not going to bother changing that. Um, and instead of this, uh, we would actually want to do this, and we would want to remove this, and then this would be uh, players, and then this would be I inside of here. And uh, we might actually want to pass something to this, so we could actually do um, like. Uh, actually, we kind of do want players, so uh, we could, we kind of, actually, I kind of fucked that up just a little bit. So what we're going to want to do to make this work, because I don't have, like, I'm not passing a user into this like I was for uh, the weapon roulette system. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually change this up just a little bit. 
So what we're going to do here is we're just going to do weps. And we'll set that equal to weapons list. So we'll cut this and paste it. Cut and we'll paste that there. And then we'll do get players. Okay, so we got the players. So now we're going to go through the players. And uh, we're going to go ahead and um, put another for loop in here. So we're going to do for. Uh, we'll do Z this time. Z equals zero. Z is less than webs.size. And then we'll do Z plus plus. And then we'll go ahead and take this and put that in there. And I'll actually explain what this does uh, after we finish this real quick. So we'll cut this. And I'm going to paste that in there. Okay, so we don't... There we go. That looks clean. Enough. Okay, so uh, we're going to go through what this is going to do. And now, how a nested for loop works, uh, for those who don't know, it's going to go into this first for loop, right? And then it's going to immediately hit the second for loop. And it's going to go through this for loop until it reaches the end of, so whatever its target is. So in this case, it's weapons.size, so however many weapons we pass in, right? And then it's going to go back out, and it's going to hit this loop again, go to the next iteration of this loop, and then go through all this again on the next player. Uh, in this case, we're only going to have one player, so we're going to be giving ourselves... Uh, all the weapons and we're going to want to change this to be weps and we're not going to have i we're going to pass it z so basically what we're doing here is for the current player which will be the first for loop right oh well one player okay so then we go into the next for loop it's going to go into here and it's going to keep looping through this until it reaches the end of the list of weapons that it's giving us and then it's going to break out and go through again for the next player in this case we're only going to have one player playing so it's only going to do it for us but uh you'll see that we can in fact give ourselves all the weapons in the world if we want it so we're going to go ahead and uh, do that real quick so we're going to go ahead and uh compile the script which might take a second because uh, I had some issues with this earlier in the computer crash so it's being a little bit retarded um, uh, and then we'll just go ahead and run real quick and you'll see that we should get we'll get all the weapons that's not we should we will And so now, if I go through, you can see I've got every weapon that's in that list. And I could cycle through every weapon. So, yeah, pretty cool, huh? So, uh, yeah. So yeah, that's, that's basically what that is. And as you can see, uh, with the mod that I created, this uh, the zombies, none of them walk. They all run. Also, the vending machines tend to uh, rip you off a bit. So yeah, uh, but yeah, as you can see, I could just give myself all the weapons if I wanted to, and you could do the same thing. Uh, so now what we're going to do is uh, test its theory. So now it, it doesn't handle certain edge cases, right? That's what it's complaining. So let's see if we activate weapons roulette, and then, uh, ooh, well, okay, never mind. Let's uh, restart the level first. So now we've got all these weapons, because right, I kind of fucked up by killing them zombies off in the first place, right? So now I'm in weapon roulette mode. So I've got 
I've got this weapon. Now let's see what happens if we disable it. Oh, well, uh, I guess maybe it might be kind of right about that. It, uh, so I, I did have a pretty large pool of weapons. Uh, so, and it doesn't really expect that. So I think that might be what happened here. Uh, because it doesn't really expect you to have a large pool of weapons. Right. There's nothing handling that either, so... So maybe it's right about that. Maybe it's right about the potential... Oh, nope, nope, wait. It's inactive and I got all my weapons back, so maybe it was just an issue with... Uh... Yeah, okay, never mind. So I was right. Uh, I think it might have been an issue with like a time delay or something on, the, on it going through the loop and giving me my shit back. Uh, wait, what happened there? It just like switched me to this weapon out of nowhere. And now I can't switch. Huh. So I guess there are some edge cases that I could clean up, but I mean... For what it's supposed to do, you're not supposed to have a large pool of weapons in your inventory anyway. So I mean, you know, you could do that, but you're, you're not supposed to have a large pool of weapons in your inventory anyway. So I mean... You know, this this isn't exactly something you're supposed to be doing. <laughs> you know, you could do it, but uh, yeah, I don't think the weapons locker likes that too much because I made this array like pretty large. Um, so yeah. So um, for some reason though, it seems like it's not. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on with that. I think it's maybe because I did give myself the whole pool of weapons, and that's a really large array. Uh, so, I'm not really sure. But you're you're never going to, like, realistically, unless you're, like, like, um, realistically, you're never going to give yourself all the weapons in the game. That just takes the fun out of it, right? So, you know, you may have three if you do, like, Mule Kick mod or something like that, right? You're not going to ever realistically have all the weapons in the game. If, you know, you could do that for fun, maybe, if you really wanted to. But, like, realistically, you're not going to do that. You're probably just going to, like, give yourself one weapon and call it a day, right? So, uh, yeah, that, that's pretty much, pretty much it. So, uh, now, I wanted to do something else here while we was here. I want to see what it thinks about... Uh, the code that I wrote for the ammo crate. So let's see what it thinks about this code. Let's let's take a gander at what ChatGPT thinks about this code. So could you rate this code for me? And then I'll pass it the code. So let's let's see what it thinks about this uh, ammo cache system. Uh, it looks like it's pretty much done coming up with its assessment. So let's go ahead and take a read through it. Here's my detailed review and rating of your new script, evaluating it based on the key factors we discussed earlier: functionality, uh, efficiency, readability, uh, error handling, and modularity. So functionality, core mechanic, the script implements an ammo cache system where a player can purchase ammo at a dynamic cost depending on the current number of zombies. Well, that's an accurate assessment because that's the way I programmed it. And I'm glad that it actually noticed all that. So that's a good thing. Cost calculations. The dynamic cost structure, ammo cache, uh, update ammo cost, based on the number of zombies is simple and effective with clear ranges for how much the ammo will cost depending on the zombie count. And that was to make ammo, that was uh, market scarcity. That was the mechanic I was trying to go for. You know, there's more zombies, you know, well, hey, you know, uh, hey, there's more demand for the ammo, right? So it got to cost more, just like a real market. So uh, that was the idea. 
uh, so yeah, and uh, trigger interactive uh, interaction. The, the give, ammo give function works as intended, deducting the cost and giving the player maximum ammo. The self wait till trigger user pattern ensures the cache is triggered when a player interacts with it. Seven out of ten. Reason: The core functionality is solid and works, but the handling of ammo purchase and trigger interaction could be refined to ensure smoother interactions. I'm not going to argue. Maybe there's some things I could do to make that better. Um, so, yeah. Polling. In ammo cache think, the script repeatedly checks the ammo cost and then waits for the trigger. However, the cost is recalculated in every iteration without uh, necessity. Instead, it should be calculated only when needed when the trigger is pressed. Okay, well, the reason I didn't do that is because it doesn't reflect the cost on the hench string, so that's kind of the way, reason why I did it that way. It was a workaround for the wait till system that they got in the game. Because uh, that's kind of how you have to wait for the trigger to be activated, right? So, cost calculation redundancy. In the ammo cache think function, the cost is checked twice if cost is equal to ammo cost this could be done once and stored in a local variable which could reduce redundant calculations okay I'm not gonna argue that might be uh, there might have been a better way I could have pulled that off but yeah um, I, I did it that way because uh, yeah, if I stored it in a local variable and I checked against it it didn't well, it, it's doesn't check properly so I needed two different variables to handle that uh, so it could check the current cost you know uh, versus the updated cost to make sure that they actually accurately reflect properly but maybe it's right maybe I can mess around with that at some point uh, weapon list interaction the loop and ammo give that iterates through the players weapons to give them max ammo is efficient enough for a small weapon for a small weapons list but could cause minor delays if many weapons are involved well I mean you should only have maybe three weapons to begin with so I mean unless you're doing like I just didn't giving yourself all the weapons in the game and then trying to do then maybe I could see there possibly being some bugs with that but like there that's it's not intended for that anyway so uh, there's no need to overthink something that's not intended to do something. Uh, if you misuse it, that's at your own risk, you know, kind of thing. Um, that's not the way it's intended to be used anyway. So, naming convention, the variable names like ammo cache think, ammo give, and update ammo cost are clear and describe the functionality they represent. Indentation and structure. The code is generally well organized and easy to follow with appropriate indentations. Uh, comments. Minimal comments are present. Adding comments explaining the logic behind key sections like uh, why the cost is calculated in certain ways or how the trigger system works would help with maintainability. Okay, well, I'm not going to argue if other people were maintaining my code base, but I'm the only one doing it, so it should be fine. Uh, duplication in the hench string. The call to self hench string, blah blah blah, is repeated unnecessarily in ammo cache think, which slightly hampers readability. The reason that's done though is because, like I said, if the cost wasn't uh, accurate to the current cost, it, it, I needed it to update that hench string uh, because it wouldn't reflect the proper cost. So that's kind of why I ended up doing it that way because it won't accurately reflect the cost and I don't want it to take your money if it's not showing you the proper cost so basically it resets itself then uh, so 7 out of 10 overall clean code structure but could benefit from some more comments and eliminating minor duplication in logic um, error handling cost validation the script 
checks whether the player's score is less than the cost, which is good. However, it could be beneficial to include feedback for the player when they don't have enough uh, score to purchase the ammo. Um, yeah, I'm not going to lie. I could have added like a sound effect in or something for that, but I didn't. Uh, trigger logic. The trigger logic self wait till trigger user could be prone to errors if not well handled as user is undefined initially where should be checked to ensure user is always properly defined when the function is triggered. To prevent potential null pointer issues, uh, okay, maybe it's right about that, but I mean, for the most part, I'm going to be playing by myself. I don't think anybody plays co-op anymore, and I don't know anybody to play co-op with to test this shit, so yeah, maybe in that scenario, maybe it wouldn't work right. Not sure. Or if like two people hit the trigger at the exact same time or something, for instance, maybe it might bug out. Um, zombie count edge cases. The update ammo cost function is clear zombie count ranges, but it could fail in edge cases where zombie counter returns undefined or unexpected values. Adding a fallback for valid values uh, would improve uh, robustness. Yeah, okay. So 6 out of 10. And the script handles basic error co uh, cases well, but could improve error handling for invalid users, edge cases, and zombie counter, and feedback for insufficient player score. Now on the modularity, we're going to say, uh, it says this separation of concerns. The script is modular with different functions for calculating ammo cost, handling the trigger, and managing the player interaction. This makes it easier to maintain and extends the, uh, extend in the future. Reusability. The update ammo cost function is well encapsulated and could easily be reused elsewhere. However, some parts of the script like how triggers are handled could be further abstracted for greater flexibility. So it gives me an 8 out of 10 on that. General thinks too bad. The script is fairly modular and logically separated into functions which allows for easier extension and reuse through certain parts could be more abstracted. Those certain parts could be more abstracted. Okay. Uh, so anyways uh, so overall, it gives me a rating of 6.8 out of 10. Final, final thoughts. Strengths. The script accomplishes its task of managing an ammo cache with dynamic pricing based on zombie count. It's clearly organized and modular, making it extendable and reusable. Areas for improvement, efficiency, and error handling could be enhanced by reducing redundant calculations and adding more robust checks. Uh, readability could be improved by adding more comments and refactoring minor duplication, duplicated logic. So yeah, um, overall I'd say its assessment's pretty fair. I mean, I'm not like disagreeing with it in any way. There's probably things I could improve. I'm not saying that I'm perfect. But I also sometimes don't believe that that uh, chat GPT is exactly perfect in its um, uh, analysis anyway but I wanted to see what it said uh, so yeah and what do we got up here we could we could try throwing this stuff in there and seeing what it thinks about this stuff but um, you know it's not you know you get the picture it, it seems to think that the code is pretty decent and, uh, you know, I kind of tend to agree with it. I did a pretty decent job with this one, uh, scripting-wise. I've done it a lot better than I would have done it in the past, so, you know, that's that's a good thing. Maybe maybe we can move on to asking it about this. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, maybe we could ask it about this. Let's ask it about my brutal mode.
So uh, now this code depends on other scripts. So That's why. Uh, so stop. What are you doing? I'm trying to send you my new code. Uh, it, it, I don't think it knows what the fuck it's doing there. Okay, so code overview. Uh, so let's see. Potential issues, improvements. Uh, no, stop. That's not what I wanted. I want... Can you rate this? That's all I want. I don't want you to give me improvements or anything like that. There we go. Now let's see what it thinks. All right. Now let's see exactly what it thinks. So let's evaluate the script in the same way we, the same way as before, focusing on functionality, efficiency, readability, handling, and okay. we're not gonna go through the whole fucking thing. So uh, what we're going to do, this script introduces a brutal mode for the game, uh, escalating the zombie's difficulty and creating a more challenging experience for players. The player can switch between brutal suicide modes via a trigger with corresponding changes in parameters like zombie speed, health, and score bonuses. Okay. Uh, dynamic game modes. The script allows players to toggle between three states, normal, brutal, and suicide mode. Each mode has a clear set of changes to game parameters, enhancing replayability and challenge. HUD feedback. The HUD updates in real time based on the selected mode, ensuring that the player always informed about the current game state. That's exactly what I wanted. It gives me an 8 out of 10 on that. The script achieves a lot, of, a lot in terms of game dynamics. It adjusts gameplay difficulty in multiple ways and provides player feedback through HUD changes, making it a great addition for enhancing gameplay. So as for efficiency, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, take a quick look at this. Switch statement. The use of the switch statement in case call in it to handle different states disabled brutal suicide is effective and clear. Update HUD uh, interval. The wait one in the HUD loop is a reasonable refresh rate that avoids unnecessary comp computational overhead. That's exactly why I did it. So it doesn't lag out or act or target or anything like that. Uh, areas for improvement, cost deduction, in brutal mode, the player, the player score is deducted with minus player cost each time the function is called, but there is no check to ensure the player has enough points. Well, yeah, uh, about that. You can go negative, um, if you have zero points, but, you know, hey, you can always crawl yourself out of debt by killing some zombies, so it's not a big deal. Um, yeah. Repeated code blocks the sections adjusting zombie parameters for brutal mode suicide mode are most uh, are almost identical these could be Consolidated to improve efficiency and reduce redundancy 
I'm not going to disagree. There's probably a better way I could do that. Um, I could probably make a function that handles changing it to, you know, uh, predetermined settings for each of those uh, based on the mode and maybe do it in a slightly different way. Uh, reusability strikes the script as well. Organized function names are clear and uh, about their purpose. Uh, brutal think, brutal HUD. The switch statement and HUD text are easily to follow, which enhances the readability of the script. Areas of improvement, comments, more comments, explaining purpose of key section would improve readability, especially for others viewing the code. Redundancy, the repeated blocks are uh, for adjusting zombies variables in both brutal and suicide modes. Uh, make the script harder to read and follow, which I'm not going to argue, it probably does, but uh, it's better than the original way I did it. <laughs> yeah, I, we should try and see if break that, but maybe we'll do that another time. I'll, I'll dig out the old version of that script and we can uh, do that. So strikes the logic for switching between modes is handled well using switch. Uh, this ensures the transition between game states are clean and predictable. Areas for improvement, player score check, okay, zombie variable reset. In the disabled state of brutal think, you reset some of the zombie variables back to default. It might be worth ensuring that all game all game affected parameters are properly restored to avoid any lingering effects from brutal or suicide modes. Mm, oh, so far I haven't found any issues with it, but I haven't thoroughly tested it yet. I just rewrote the script this morning from an old script that was really janky and like poorly written that I made like a year or so ago. Uh, anyways. Modularity strengths, the code is reasonably modular with separated functions, key pieces of functionality. Uh, this helps with reusability and maintainability. Areas for improvement, the logic for adjusting the zombie variables and brutal think could be extracted into helper function to reduce redundancy and improve modularity. Um, yeah, so a 7.4 out of 10. So yeah. Uh, like I said, that's something for a future video. Maybe we'll get into how to make that because it is dependent on other scripts. Uh, you have to modify some Treyarch scripts if you want it to actually work the way I intend it to. So, uh, yeah, it, it, you could theoretically use this, but, like, uh, yeah, that's, that's a subject for another video. But I thought I would, uh, just kind of share that I was pissing around with it and wanted to show you what it thought of my code. It will try and give you, like, improvement tips and, like, even, you know, rewrite some code for you where it thinks it's necessary if you ask it to. But I don't recommend using that. For one, to get better at it, if you used an AI to assist you, you might not understand exactly the changes it made and what it's doing with those changes. Especially if you're more new to the, you know, whole scripting thing. Uh, so you might not understand what it, what it's actually doing, and then you might not be able to make effective use of the code it gives you anyway. Um, and uh, the other thing is, it's, it's just not good practice. If you're trying to get good at programming, you definitely should not be using an AI to do your job for you. You should just, that, that, uh, that takes away from the thought process, which is what you're supposed to be doing when you're coming up with logic for uh, game code or any code for that matter if you're handing the thought process of handling logic off to an AI you're not improving your own skill set even if you are decent at it or whatever you know you're not improving your own skill set you, you know if anything you're at stagnation now because you're using an AI to do your job so uh, I don't recommend using it to write you code, but if you want it to check your code or maybe help you improve it, uh, as long as you actually understand what's going on uh, first and foremost uh, and can make effective use of its changes, then maybe it could be okay for that. But I still don't recommend doing that because that uh, 
you know, it takes the fun out of rewriting stuff and improving it yourself if you have something else do it for you. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to do here. Um, I know this was a little bit different. It wasn't like something that I had originally planned to do, but I thought it would be something kind of fun to check out. So uh, hope you guys liked it, and uh, see you next time.